Hi, I'm Dave Boyer. I'm Dave Billy. We're the co-leaders of the uh, Rotary Fellowship uh, Motorcycle Ride, the first overnight trip ever. We're about to leave here at 9 in the morning from uh, the Pan Pancake Cafe. We've had a great breakfast. It's a great start. And we're going to head off right now towards uh, Dubuque and Anamosa, Iowa, where we're going to be going into a motorcycle museum and uh, having the chance to go to JP Cycles and buy some stuff for our cycles. And then for the night, uh, David, where we're going that night? Well, tonight we're going to be in uh, Savannah, Illinois, staying at the luxurious Super 8 or Motel 6, one of those two. But it's a lovely spot and we're going to have a good time and explore the town a little bit. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to come back up to Galena, have uh, breakfast there, walk around a little bit, and then uh, Head north a little bit to the Haugi Log Church, which is near Dalyville, and it's the uh, uh, earliest Norwegian church, and we're going to have the chance to walk around the church before we head back to uh, Madison. So we look forward to a good uh, two-day event, overnight event, with uh, the Rotary Fellowship. Yep. Excellent. Billing and I have uh, planned this trip, and we've got all the plans here. However, we've got a lot of room for flexibility, too. So you know, stops and other things. If anybody wants to do something different than that, we don't have to stick to this exactly. As somebody said, um, all plans are wrong, but some are useful. So hopefully <laughs> this is useful. We are um, gonna be um, headed out, I'll lead, at least at the beginning. And then I think, Jeff, you're uh, behind me, as I recall. Okay. And Angie, are you gonna- I'm gonna be, be at the sweep. rear. I sweep it up. Yeah, you sweep yeah. it up. And make sure if anybody goes off the road, I'll know about it. Right. And this, the one signal that you thought, uh, did everybody hear at the at the breakfast uh, table? Yeah. Well, that. it's a visual signal. If you want to stop, pat your head. I will see it. I'll radio Jeff, and he'll beat the leader, and we'll yeah. stop. Right. We'll, okay. we'll find out what the too. problem is. And uh, that will, if I see somebody having trouble, I'll radio Jeff, and we'll all stop. So. Yeah. Um, so I will, we, on the back of this, I'm just going to go through some, uh, some of the rules uh, for safety that I either picked up from experience or off the internet. Um, I'm going to try to ride at the speed of the slowest rider. So I'll gauge that as we go along, but if anybody wants to ride slower or faster, uh, particularly slower, uh, let me know. We're, every time we go through an intersection, um, I'll be visually waiting to try to make sure the last person gets through. Sometimes the lead person just takes off at the intersection and that separates the group. But I'll, I'll tell Jeff I'm through and he can give you a beat. Yeah, okay. Um, ride in staggered formation, you know, left, right, and a good rule of thumb, a normal rule of thumb is two seconds between you and anything in front of you. But in this case, it would be one second between you and the alternate uh, bike, just to give kind of a distance. And uh, that helps from uh, one second and it applies to any speed. If we do have to pass, uh, one at a time and stay in formation. I think a great safety rule is never uh, pass one of the other motorcyclists and then pass the car. Go in the order and then go back into the formation. Um, we've got first aid kits. Um, you know, I've got one. I was going to give it to David, but do you guys have a first aid kit? Well, there's going to be one in the, one car. in the car. So if we need that, we've got that towards the end. Um, I do have a cell phone that's active, and I've told uh, David uh, that. Uh, meaning I can receive a call as the lead writer. I've got it uh, down here. Uh, I Interestingly, I looked up on the internet for signal, uh, signals that are standard, and the AMA has this whole layout of standard uh, signals, American Motorcycle Association, okay. and I wrote them here. Um, stop, interestingly, is, is 90 degrees. Just like, like a bike? Like a, like a bicycle. Slow down is on an angle, your, your palm uh, in. Hazard in the right uh, in the roadway. Um, you, you, if it's on the right, you point with your right foot. But if it's on the left, you point with your left hand. And then uh, pull off. I think you guys got a good one. They're recommended is you position for right turn and then you point towards the right to pull off. That's the A and A one. Let's use the hit the helmet. To, yes, it's very uh, similar. Yeah. yeah. So you know that's right. that's about it. I think you know you safety. Didn't tell is important. us we had to take a class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got an A. We're uh, we're gonna try to ride in the ten bikes, but if it just becomes too uh, onerous, we'll uh, divide up into two two different groups. Because you know? ten's right at the limit in terms of the number of bikes. But certainly because it's rotary, if not because you're all wonderful people, safety you know, is important.
happen. You don't want that in the blog. No. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to lose our edit. edgy image. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. 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 So um, first, uh, we're, right now, uh, the first stop would be uh, Cuba City, and um, I don't know, that's probably 45 minutes or an hour. I, I, I forget, does anybody want us to stop sooner for a bathroom break? Do you want to do a quick... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. right. Sorry, so, Dave, where's the first stop? Cuba City, oh, and Cuba I'm just going to pull up. into the largest gas station you know, I can find for bathrooms and drinks and a break. And then from Cuba City, we'll probably end up going all the way to Anamosa, uh, you know, generally. Uh, we could stop if we wanted to, but Dubuque's only, you know, 20 minutes from Cuba City. So we'll go to Anamosa. The, the fast part of the trip on today will be Dubuque to Anamosa, because we'll just be on 151. There's really not much other alternative. And the first place we're stopping is lunch, but it, lunch happens to be uh, right where the museum is. So you can go right to the museum, and if anybody uh, we'll just talk about if anyone wants to go to JP Cycles, we will ask them about a mile and a half up the road. If you've never been there, um, especially for cruisers, they've got a huge showroom. It's their national distribution spot. Cool. And it's a huge showroom. They've got everything, anything in their catalog. They'll go back to the warehouse and get it and have you and bring it out and let you look at it and uh, try it. So, and they've got lots of parking there. So, we'll just, at lunch, we'll just talk about who's going to do what and yeah. come up with a meeting point. Or some people could do both. We could do the museum really quickly in an hour and go to J. I think we had two hours or something in Anamosa, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Talk about it. Yeah, talk about it. Motorcycle. Motorcycle? Oh, yeah, it's a great motorcycle. So it was started by the founder of JP Cycles. And then a few years ago, they moved into an abandoned, like Walmart. So they've got lots of room. They've got tons of bikes from from uh, a, a whole wide range of age. So it's a, it's pretty interesting. Isn't it? It's like eight or nine dollars or something. All right. So All other right. than that, in terms of order, you know, I'm going to lead, and I think Jeff's next. You all can pick whatever the comfortable order, and we got our seat. We on the seat up. Okay. So this is my bike. It's a uh, 2008. Yamaha FJR 1300, and um, it's a, the general class of sport touring. It's about 1300 cc's. It's got a direct shaft drive, no chain, and probably the most unique thing about it, it has no clutch on it. So it's a semi-automatic. It still shifts. Here's the shift pedal um, down here, and it also has a shift lever here in case you don't want to use your foot. But it doesn't need a um, it doesn't need a clutch, so in kind of stop and go traffic. And the other way cool thing about it is that the windshield, you know, I'll kind of turn it on, and the windshield articulates up and down, which kind of creates this kind of bubble shield effect over you. So when it's raining or when you want it to just quiet down, it keeps the wind noise down. So, um, so that's a pretty cool thing. State of the art. Though. It's uh, it's very cool. You know, it's uh, really I was amazed that the first time I got stuck in rain, I just put the windshield up and I didn't get wet at all. It just went right over my head. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So, and how long have you had it? I've had it for uh, three years now. And you highly recommend it? I love it. I think it's a great bike. And actually, you know, they kind of the. When, when I bought it, I got a great deal on it because the, uh, the guy that sold it, uh, the, I bought it from a dealer, and he said, uh, nobody wants a, a motorcycle without a clutch. <laughs> I thought, well, okay, sold, <laughs> because it's, uh, you know, it's the thing that's keeping me away from carpal tunnel syndrome. It's a great thing. So uh, I love it. It's a, great, it's a lot of fun to ride around in. Peter, thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> this is my bike. And it, it does it's very nice. Yes. I like it. Uh, We've got some good trips with it. What kind is it? It's a Honda Shadow Tourer. Okay, what size is that motor down there? That's 1100 cc. And what year? Just enough. It's a 2000. And so, are you the original owner? Yeah, bought it new. And what have you done to it? Well, we put on the floorboards, put on the highway bars, pegs. But otherwise, it's pretty much custom stock, I mean. So the, the windshield came with? Yep. Came with the windshield. And the saddlebags down there? Yeah, the saddlebags came with it as well. Right. What about the uh, backrest? Oh, and this is, yeah, this, we added this with the arms. You like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. My wife nodded off a couple of times going out in Wyoming. Uh, did you feel safe? Huh? Did you feel safe? Yeah. Alrighty then. Yeah. 
<laughs> the sleeping wipe on the back felt safe. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. just ooh. bungee quartered her on and things were good. Oh yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> so Dave, so, thank you. Enjoy it very much. Thank you. You bet. Hi. What you got here is a BMW R1200 RT, which is a sport touring bike. It's got a two-cylinder engine. It's a, a boxer engine. The cylinders go in and out opposed to one another. It's a German um, bike, and it's made for twisties and for long haul trips combined. That's why they call it sport touring. It's a 1200 cc uh, engine. And uh, Dave, what year is it? It's a 2006. It's got about 38,000 miles on it. And are you the original owner? I am. So what drew you to this model? Well, for, I'm an engineer. You know, so an engineer would buy a BMW. Of course. So it's well engineered. It drives very, na very nicely. It um, is able to handle twists and turns as I said just really nicely but yet it's very comfortable and fast so it's fast and silky yeah I like that fast and silky <laughs> thank you David <laughs>
it is Sunday, the 18th, August 18th. And here we are getting ready for our next day of riding. And we're all going to have a good time because the weather is just absolutely perfect. This is a 1978 Honda Goldwing, one of the earlier ones. Uh, my father bought it in 1988. Uh, drove it for about a year, then it sat in the barn for many, many, many years. <clears throat> Father passed away, and so I dug it out of the barn a couple of years ago, and been fixing it up and riding it. It's only got uh, 24,000 miles on it. Todd, what's your favorite aspect about this bike? Uh, I just like the touring bike, and when I was a kid, I was always fascinated with gold wings. So it's nice to be able to ride this bike again that I used to ride when I was in college, and actually my wife and I dated, and we were on this bike together. Thank you. Good morning. I'm having a great time with our rotary friends on our ride and I want to tell you a little bit about my 2003 Kawasaki Nomad. I actually traveled to St. Paul to find it and I didn't tell the guy that I was from Madison area. So I showed up on his doorstep, we took a test ride, I bought it, and I, <coughs> I rode it home. Now since that time I've added this Harley Davidson Tour Pack. Notice that it's custom painted to match. I've also had some riser extenders made for the handlebars so they'll come to meet me so that I can sit in the appropriate riding position and be more comfortable. I really like the highway peg bars that are, allow me to kick out and roll down the highway nicely. That's an addition. Do you know these highway lights really add to safety? And having this little bit of fairing lower, I mean that may not look like a lot, but that definitely helps you with the wind protection down the road. And of course, I just like the way it looks. I mean, it rolls and people go, wow, cool, what is that? Because people don't really see it very well because it doesn't look like anything really, but it's mine. That's the deal. Thanks. Hi, John. This is my uh, 2003 BMW, and uh, I got it about five years ago. It's a uh, combination street road model, 1150 cc's, and uh, it's about my eighth bike and uh, but this one was kind of my dream bike when I was in uh, uh, college I remember these pictures of the NATO dispatch riders in the 60s on their black BMWs with their black full leathers and uh, riding like mad down the Autobahn in Europe carrying important documents from Berlin to the Hague or something like that and uh, I imagined that I would have a BMW someday so uh, I have one now and, and it's beautiful Tom thank you it's absolutely stunning really it's 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 a nice bike I found it uh, on Craigslist of course and sure we find everything. Yeah, you bet and uh, I've put a few miles on it riding with uh, some other people who are on this ride Dave Boyer is one of my regular riding cars. Nice. So, thank you for this ride. This you're, is, uh, you're very welcome. Great, great yeah, privilege to be part of it. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Please note that I had these leathers after our house burned down and I had a green bike and it just didn't look cool. So when the 2008 Harley came out, I said I can buy a bike that matches my leathers. And then my friend said it's not chromed enough. So Brown's plating in Tennessee or Kentucky decided to chrome the entire bike. Note how it gleams in the morning sun. Oh. Listen, when you're an old lady, you can only have bling if you can't have diamonds. Peggy, thank you. This is my bike. And what do I like about it? Because it has everything that's not Harley. It's got some lights that move around Everything is chromed. What you're missing here are all my diamond, cup sil diamond cut cylinder heads. My chromed front wheel, my chromed front forks, and my air cleaner that matches the color of my bike. And so it just gives something that old ladies can use that attracts all the hunks. What can we say? <laughs> Thank you, Peggy.
So then every time I get a new pair of tires on, the thing just wants to, I mean, it's just, and then as oh. the flat goes, yeah, yeah. it has more resistance. You have to press harder. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jeffrey, how do you like your bike? I love it. We're having a wonderful ride. What do you ride? I ride a Yamaha V-Star 650. Oh, oh strange. I ride a Yamaha 1100cc. Yeah. Well, it's your, you've got to bring your bike. That's right. Bigger is better. So I decided to get back into motorcycling after 40 years uh, and we took a motorcycle safety course at MATC and... And I took it too because I didn't want to be the co-pilot of a plane I didn't know what to do with. So I, we finished that course and I uh, went out and bought a, a new uh, 2005 uh, V-Star and started riding it. And I discovered I wasn't a co-pilot, I was a pilot, so I bought a Honda 250 and rode it for a year. And then I got my big bear, my Yamaha 1100cc, wow. And we have two of them in Madison, and when we spend the winter out in Tucson, we have two of them out there. So we ride all year round. What could be better than that? So. This is my Honda CB650. It's a 1983 Honda. And the interesting thing about this bike is we got it originally for my youth exchange student, Pedro from Brazil. He rode this for, oh, I would say two years. He actually accompanied us on one of our trips with the motorcycle uh, fellowship group. Now, the nice thing about this bike is it always starts. However, on the trip with Pedro, the baffle in the muffler, it came out. 
and it made a huge racket. And Angie Bartell and I went back and got the baffle off the side of the road, and we then took it with us, and at our next stop, we bought a stainless steel screw, that one right there, and we reinstalled this so that it wouldn't be so darn noisy. And ever since then, we've enjoyed having this as a spare bike for anybody who liked to ride. Ask Uriah Carpenter how he liked this bike on the ride. And enjoy. Ha 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 ha! Ho ho!